Thank you again for joining me for my Thursday devotion. We've been working through 2 Corinthians, and so far we have looked at the first five chapters. Today we're going to look at chapter 6. It's a relatively short chapter, so easy to cover, but it makes some really wonderful points. The first passage I want to look at is from, again, 2 Corinthians 6, verse 2b, where he simply says, I tell you, now is the time of God's favor, now is the day of salvation. That's absolutely true. Now, what is the now there? Well, he wrote that in the first century, so 2,000 years ago. But in the 21st century, same thing is true. Now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Because people are still being brought to faith. Uh, God is still showing his grace and his favor upon people. When we are in the presence and company of God, it is always the time of God's favor. When we see God's hand upon us, the love he has for us, the way he blesses us again and again, now is the time of God's favor. And so we give thanks for his promises, good to us, no matter if it's the first century, 21st century, or even way far beyond, because now is the time of God's favor. We give great thanks for that. Look also now at verse 3. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path so that our ministry will not be discredited. A good message, again, from a great guy, a wonderful missionary, St. Paul, but he makes himself an example, saying, yeah, I know the scriptures, I know what's going on, I can proclaim it and preach it however I feel God leading me, but I'm not taking that great authority and using it as a way to uh, demean anybody or get in your way. He's setting himself as an example of goodness and godliness and not above serving people. So it's absolutely right where he says, we put no stumbling block, no stumbling block in anyone's path or anyone's way so that our ministry will not be discredited. We, we would never want that. So Paul is simply making a point that I'm about proclaiming God, proclaiming Christ to you, and I will do everything I can to never trip you up or confuse you or cause you to question your faith in God. It's the last thing he would ever want to do. Now look at the first part of verse 4. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way. And then second part of verse 4, all the way through verse 10, Paul lists some of the things he has had to endure. I won't read all of this. It's way too long. Um, troubles, hardships, distresses, good report, bad report. Uh, again and again and again. I encourage you to look at this chapter with me and see all the things and from verse 4 to verse 10, St. Paul says he has tolerated for the sake of the preaching of the gospel. I will not let my whippings, he said, you know, out of my beatings, my imprisonments, ever hinder me from getting the word out about who God is. And we give great thanks for his example, because I'm sure he suffered more for his faith than any of us have. But even though he suffered horribly, he never let it get in the way of him proclaiming what needed to be proclaimed. People need to know Jesus Christ. One more verse I'll look at as verse 14. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. And he goes on to other things like, For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? What fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Satan or Belial? What does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? So he simply starts out by saying, don't yoke yourselves. Don't be connected to people of unbelief. Now, I think his point is being made that don't be so connected with them that you would let them lead you astray from God. We can't help being affiliated with people of faith or not of faith. We associate with whom we associate. And I think we also want to be, be the example of what godliness is to unbelievers. He's simply there saying that don't be yoked together, like don't be tied to them, don't be committed to them so that they might wrongly influence you to leave the faith. Now, we can certainly be connected to them and have friendships in them, family too, but but maybe it's just the purpose of sharing who we are as God's people to the people in our lives, because that's what God has called us to do. So again, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Hope uh, you enjoy these points. I encourage you, it's again only 18 verses long, so please read that on your own. God bless you weekend. If you can join us for worship on Sunday, that'd be wonderful. Bye-bye.